hello hello everyone um so i'm just going to take you guys through my process um i just thought it would be kind of cool to give you guys a little bit of a peek um into how i do some things um so regarding these crows so i'm getting four crows um i gave a little bit of insight into what i was receiving I am going to do a crow um, channeled message in the collective, but as I was sitting here, I felt so intuitively guided to actually do um, a crow pick a card. But in order to do a pick a card, I need to identify these crows. So I'm going to ask each of the crows, so there's four that I was channeling and picking up on um, over the past couple of days that I posted on my community page that I, we will do a larger collective read on, but I'm going to ask each of the crows and um, I'm calling them the four crows of enchantment. So I'm going to ask each of them one at a time to come through and tell me who they are. And then um, we're going to do a pick a card in a few days. So what I'm gonna do is start with this Oracle deck. This is the Dreams, Shamanic, Sh Shaman Dreams, I believe. I know one of them, I know one of them is the Crow of Destiny. I know, uh, I think I know the other one is the crow of connectivity or like psychic connection or something like that. Yeah, at the bottom of that is connection staring at me. Um, I think another one is manifestation and creation. Um, and I don't know the last one. But anyways, I don't know. These are just like what I'm feeling. Um, so let's see. Let's get a little bit of uh, details on these crows. So let's ask the first crow to come through. I have four like two, three oracle cards in the tarot deck. I'm gonna get some information on them. Okay. Okay, so at the bottom of the deck is a repair. So something to do with healing. Um, let's see. Ancestral repair, family repair. I'm getting a lot of repair with this one and healing. Messages from your families, messages from your ancestors, loved ones that have been passed. Um, what do you want to tell me? Okay, you have winter's dream, gestation period, 63. Okay, what is this first crow? Who are you? What do you represent? In the hand. Universe is your partner, number 31. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Beloved, radical acceptance. So beloved, loved ones. Okay. Um, I'm definitely getting that beloved loved ones that have passed through the veil that are in the hand of the universe, that are in the hands of God, that are in the hand. Okay, they've passed. Getting a lot of dreams, uh, like telepathy, communication. So this crow is coming through to me as like the crow of communication. Um, let's see what else we got. The crow of the beloveds. who are you what do you represent yeah more of that hand look at all this hand <laughs> connections love um gratitude at the bottom who are you crow number one who are you focus number 14 
action number 15 interesting those are progressing numbers and beauty number 20 at the bottom that is darkness let me get into these So I'm definitely getting, um, this crow definitely assists with what you should, uh, um, mm, sorry, hold on. <laughs> um, this crow's energy is assisting you, um, in seeing something clearly, okay? And receiving messages clearly is something that I'm seeing here. This has a lot of intuition and intuitive energy around the space that's coming through around your intuition around your um psychic insight so it's really giving you that connectivity through the veil to the beloved to the souls that have passed to your ancestors to your spirit guides to your spirit team so the really messages through the veil i'm assisting you in taking action um there's a lot of like partnership energy here coming through, like your ancestors, um, how they can assist you, your beloved um, loved ones who have passed and how they can assist you, um, how they are still your partner, how they can, you know, they're, they're your partners in action, they're your partners in crime, so to speak, like how you can utilize spirit and loved ones that have passed, um, how you can communicate to them, how you can use their assistance in your practical life, um, guiding you and helping you move forward, okay? Um, and also seeing, again, like seeing something that you may not be seeing, okay? It's something that I'm getting here with this crow. Oh, oh wow. Look what, look what. Look what fell. <laughs> uh, so many cards fell out as soon as I said crow. So that's just the energy. I feel like I totally manifested that. Projected that into the cards as I said crow. Alright, so journey. Yeah, so it's really about motivate and independence. Okay. And let's get a tarot on this crow. Get a tarot card on this crow, please. And a tarot card. Okay. <laughs> Let's get a tarot card on this crow. Alright. So we got the Page of Cups. Lots of emotionality, yeah, nine of swords, those worries. Okay, let's get one more since we're getting three of each. And the three of cups, yeah, that is friendship, that's family, that's the universe, that's soul family um ancestors so yeah this crow is all about connection to loved ones messages connecting you to your loved ones um and how they can assist you and guide you okay um so this crow is going to bring in that energy of what messages do you need to hear through the veil from your loved ones um from your ancestors from your spirit team, from your spirit guide. Um, they're really going to assist you in things that you cannot see or things that you may be missing about yourself here with independence, things that you may be worried about, um, things that you may be struggling to get started is something that I'm so focused, focused on here with Nine of Swords and the Page of Cups, okay? If you're having trouble getting started with something, um, or wrapping your brain around something or accepting something, okay? This crow is really going to assist with that, okay? Um, helping you to restore motivation on your journey. Okay, so this is crow number one. So let me write this down. Is this my process? <laughs> um, okay, so... 
crow number one. And really, um, even my, you know, I'm recording this. I'm going to post it just to give you guys some transparency into like how I do things. Um, but really, also, it's for me because I'm probably going to go back to this video and see um, before I do the pick a card. So, crow number one is all about how. Um, let's give him a name or her name. Crow of the Beloved. So, this is communication through the veil. Bringing in loved ones. Ancestors. Assistance. Guidance. <sighs> Motivation. Focus. Uh, things that you need to accept. Acceptance and what you may not be seeing. Okay. All right, so crow number one, crow of the beloved. Okay, so that's crow number one. Now we're going to just clear the space. Um, And clear the space. I do need to grab my sage. I don't want any cards to come out that are the same. Just bear with me. Okay, so I felt like, um, let's start with the Shaman Dreams again. I do feel, I see, I forgot what I said. So Crow of the Beloved, this is really the Crow of Communication. Crow of Communication, Crow of the Beloved, Crow of Communication. Okay, and then I said, I don't know what I said. See, I forget. I forget so much from my channel. I know one of them is to do with love. Crow of love. Um, what else did I say? Crow, oh, Crow of creation. And then something else. Yeah, I forget. I'm going to have to look back. But let's see. Okay. Who is the second crow? Who is the second crow of enchantment? Who wants to come through? Ooh. Crow of the Akashics. <laughs> uh, this is actually something that I channeled. This is the crow of the Akashics. I can feel it immediately. Crow number two. Uh, crow of the Akashics. Um, I do feel like this is linked to, like, purpose. Um, yeah, you have Dream Thief at the bottom, that refusal of the call. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 13. Okay. Um, let's get one more. Crow of the Akashic. Uh, Crow of Divine Purpose. Yeah, the Divine Matrix. Oh, this one's going to be big. Yep, yep, yep. Vanishing mirror. So this has everything to do with the removal and the completion of old contracts. Um, karmic contracts. And this is about starting new contracts. 
So really for this group, um, when we do pick a card, this crow is going to be around what new Akashic contracts are starting for you, are beginning. It's also around your purpose here with refusal of the call. Um, so if you're questioning your purpose, that message may come through in that group um, and really connecting you in that connection field of the divine matrix that we are channeling. So this is about a higher consciousness, your consciousness moving into the new divine matrix where new contracts are going to be beginning. And this is this, this is this group that if you truly feel like you have like completed your contracts, completed your karmic contracts, you're starting something new, you want to know what new contracts are coming in or what are their energies or what you just what do you need to know regarding that. Um, and this is definitely for the group that has that have rewritten their contracts. OK, so this is a crow of the Akashics. Um, Okay, let's get a little bit more detail because I know it's that it could be tied to creation, but they're being like this crow is being very, very specific around uh, Akashics. So let's see, a yeah, realization at the bottom. I'm not gonna get take it. I don't feel guided to take it. Um, let me shuffle properly. Sorry. Okay, so crow of the Akashics. What do you what do you represent? What's your energy? Wow! 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 Oh, sorry. <laughs> Look at this protection and beginnings. Yeah, these are oh, something else also fell. Resilience fell out, but I don't feel guided to take it. Um. Okay. So protection and beginnings. So the again, this is just confirmation for me as this is my process that this is a crow that protects sacred contracts. Um, that is also like now I'm kind of seeing this as the protector of the sacred contracts. It's almost like kind of looks like this is a I know this is light, but it almost to me looks like a piece of paper in this globe right here. Um, and this is the guardian that's protecting what's inside, protecting the contracts. So with this beginning card and this protection, what it's telling me is that this crow of the Akashic is protecting the new contracts, the new contracts that are beginning, that are beginning here with the beginnings card. That's a really massive energy because a lot of people are completing their contracts, um, starting new contracts, new soul contracts, new um, purposes, their purpose contracts, I don't know if that makes sense. Um, as their consciousness moves into that divine matrix. Self-love, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. One more. Oh, that's three from here, but I feel like one more. This is number six, but we are in year six. This is all about harmony and relationships. So this is telling me um, that these new contracts have been triggered uh, because of love, because of the love energy, because of the love, the consciousness and the love that has been raised in your in your body, in your physical body, in your spiritual body, in your consciousness, in your essence, in your spirit. Um, and that really, yeah, look, realization again at the bottom. Uh, wow. Yeah, you know what? Some of you, like, uh, this This crow is really talking to me about um, realizations of purposes, realizations of contracts, the cost of contracts. Um, things of that nature you do have here fruition at the bottom or um, that came out um these are also soul contracts okay here with self-love um 
so soul contracts that you have with other people that are going to be new and you did mention that a lot of people are going to be meeting new people connecting to new people soul families are going to be reunited and friendships and partnerships and lovers and things of that nature so because of this enhancement of self-love and that higher consciousness um you know that is going to mirror into those soul groups that are going to be starting okay so um this is definitely for the group that are beginning new contracts so if you're curious about what new contracts are going to be in for you you can do your balance they got a little bit more information. Oh, yes, the rose. Timeless. Yep, 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 yep. Timelessness. So, um, in control. Okay. And let's get some tarot on this guy. The second crow, the crow of the Akashics. So, timeless is really talking to me about how the crows are, um, are timeless. Um, messengers or timeless spirit, um, you know, as are we, as is the universe, timeless. Um, uh, but I'm getting a lot of past, uh, present, and future energies that are all um, one. So there's definitely a lot of like this timelessness um, in this energy. Um, this crow really helps as well as with balance and releasing control. Um, releasing control to uh, releasing re resistances to allow for things to to fruit um, to bloom it's to really help you um, like this fruition card is really talking to me about um, fulfillment of contracts um, things coming to pass okay so some of some of us may control um outcomes and expectations so i'm seeing that this crow really assists assists with releasing that um and really trusting and going in the flow of <laughs> going in the flow of timelessness um okay okay let's get a little bit more understanding of this crow wow queen of wands hello queen of wands we have the Six of Swords. Um, and the Seven of Wands. That's really interesting because the Seven of Wands it truly has the same energy of this uh, dream thief. Even the same posture. Posture, excuse me. Um, like refusing something. Not letting something pass. Uh, or come to be. Come to pass. Um, so I'm definitely seeing this crow helps with releasing blockages, releasing that control, um, to step into, to step into power, to step into, um, feeling empowered. Okay, here with the queen of wands and really stepping in and stepping through. I'm also seeing this as an Akashic gateway. This is also like a, a, a gatekeeper. So I'm also kind of seeing this how we have we talked about with a gatekeeper, um, I'm also seeing that like a gatekeeper of these contracts, the gatekeeper of the Akashic. Um, it's kind of like meeting the gatekeeper of the Akashic and this little guy like peeking his head out of the mushroom. It's almost like a little indicator kind of signaling like you're close, like you're right there. You're close to something here. Yeah, so this group is definitely... Um, for this group, this crow is all about the Akashics, okay, and the new contracts. So let me just take this down, okay. So crow of the Akashics, um, so bringing in messages about sacred contracts, new contracts with self, okay. Um, purpose and uh, soul contracts with others okay um, protection okay um, timelessness so this is past present and future energies
and then um, assists and balance. Um, and release of control for bloom, fruition, things coming to pass. Okay. Um, this is also a Kasha Gatekeeper. I'm kind of getting like um, a Kasha Gatekeeper, but the crow is a messenger. The crow is a messenger. I'm also getting a Gatekeeper energy here. So I'm getting Gatekeeper and, and Messenger at the same time. Um, okay. And then the Divine Matrix is such an interesting energy here. I'm just going to write that down. Divine Matrix. This is the new. All right. So that's the second crow. Thank you, second crow. Let's get the third crow. Okay. Again, this is just my process. I'm just... These videos are also helpful for me if I need to go back to it before I do um, the pick a card. But this is just to introduce you guys and also myself. I'm channeling these crows for the first, well, channeling them individually for the first time. But um, we picked up on them a few days ago that I posted on my community page. Um, all right, so the third crow, the third crow. Um, okay, now I'm definitely feeling crow's creation. Like, this is a big creation one. I can feel it. Okay. Because I want it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Divine Summon, Cosmic Loom, here, creation, life. Um, okay. Crow number three, who are you? Crow number three, let's see. Crow number three, who are you? Crow number three, who are you? What energies do you represent? What energies do you bring forward? Ah, choices and their consequences. Feast of plenty. Yep, yep, yep. Drifter experiencing life as it comes. Number 14. opportunity yes okay yep yep the magician sword at the bottom of the deck yep i definitely feel magician energy um you have your the fate sky writing at the bottom so this um i almost want to say like this definitely so confidence in your magic is your opportunity if you're sky writing Experiencing life as it comes, feast of plenty, choices, and their consequences. So again, I definitely feel like this is the crow of creation. Um, I don't know if it's like faded creation. How do I want to say this? I feel like this is just crow of creation. Crow number three. Crow of creation. Okay. Um, yes, yes. Okay, manifesting opportunities, creating opportunities for yourself, being very careful of your choices because they do have consequences and also experiencing, having new experiences and setting those new intentions to have those new experiences is something that I'm seeing. Um, and fate is also a really interesting energy here that's coming in with this crow energy as well. So let's get some more. Okay. Crow of creation, what energies do you bring forward? Who are you? What do you represent? What energies do you bring forward? Crow of creation. What energies do you bring forward? Crow of creation. All right, interesting. Same energy as the first crow. This is about beauty. Um, oh, wow. You have your 2020. I'm sorry. 2020. Uh, interesting synchronicity right there. 
I have a feeling that for this group, whoever chooses this, um, 2020 was a really big year of change. 2020 was a really massive year of a metamorphosis and an inner transformation, um, an awakening within the self. Like, um, yeah, 2020 is a really big year for this group. Okay. Like a lot, like a personal transformation, because I know 2020 was a really big year in general for the collective, but, um, you know, something very personal, okay? All right, um, crow number three, crow of creation, what energies do you represent? Crow of creation, what energies do you represent? Balance, oh, this is interesting, very, very interesting, very interesting. Uh, and wisdom, okay. Wow, I'm gonna get one more because I have four here. I'm gonna do four, four, four for this one. Okay, and then you have your acceptance. And it's number four. All right, that's some magic right there. Okay, um, so, and then you have here, so this is interesting. This is very, very interesting. You actually have here two fours here as well. Four, four. Okay, this crow is like super, super freaking magical. I mean, they're all magical, but this is interesting. So you have here 2019. Okay, and then you have your 2020. Okay, and then it's almost like it skips a year, and then you have your 2022. Okay, I have a feeling for this group, um, there is something about a sig like significant years, and almost like one year kind of like flew right by, and then something kind of like conjured up within your soul where you accepted something deeply within yourself and it's almost like I don't know why I'm like almost I feel like I'm channeling and already picking up energy this crow is coming through to me of like having having um having like a year of like almost not doing anything because in that year there was such um an influx of um receiving wisdom and gaining so much internal balance tons of introspection like i'm getting i'm getting a lot of like hermit energy hierophant energy Like, it's almost like we're, we're, they're kind of like showing me where there's this like period of like pause, a period of nothingness, um, a period of seclusion to just be with your own beauty, to be with your own self and your own energy, kind of like a reflective time. And that's why like, I'm not seeing 2021 here, but I'm seeing 2019, 2020, 2022, 2022 is going to be the year because 22 is under the opportunities card so um this definitely does feel like the year of opportunity okay that you're creating that this crow of creation is bringing forward and helping you um and assisting you and guiding you also 22 is four so you do have your four 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 but yeah i'm just getting like one year was so it all like it also like went by super quickly um or it may have gone like super slow for you but it was like almost a year of nothingness and then now it's like you're reaching out to grab something because you have confidence in your magic so it almost feels like this is a group like the crows coming to towards me and saying like this is a group that's like coming out of nesting that's coming out of this tunnel that's going into the light. There's a light of opportunity here. So it's a really interesting um, energy with this crow of creation. Like pause is super important here. Um, like that's the wisdom that this crow is, is also bringing in. Because like in that pause, it really, really started to showcase 
to you the confidence in your magic. It's almost like you have to have that pause to truly understand your magic, your power, your ability. And here you have balance twice. This is interesting. Okay. Um, so you do have your balance twice. Okay. Eternity. Oh my god, I'm just getting this energy of like someone, like their one year felt like eternity. Um, yeah, transformation. Wow. Moth. Remember that reading we did? The Gravedigger and the Moth. Oh, there's the crow, Destiny. <laughs> Oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Okay, so yeah, okay, let's get some tarot on this guy. All right, so Crow of Creation. Crow of Creation. Oh my God, Empress. Yes, Creation. New beginnings. This guy is really interesting. <laughs> um. Wow, there's so much energy here. Like I'm feeling um like even cre like creation of your destiny, like co-creating your destiny, um being intertwined with destiny again, like you have here destiny and fate cuz I was like, where does fate come in here, crow of creation? You have your destiny and fate. This group, whoever chooses this group is really interesting. Um, I'm just, I'm hearing like, oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> ah, this crow is uh, fascinating. Um, three of wands, this is prophecy. This is waiting for your ships to come in. This is opportunity. You have here the opportunities card. I'm telling you, this is the crow of creation, the crow of opportunity. Um, wow. Lots of, like, I almost wanted to call this crow, like, the crow of faded creations. Or, like, I don't know, crow of, I don't want to say crow of destiny. It's crow, it's, it's creation, but it feels like, let me get two more. I'm going to have to sit on this one. See what's going on. Yeah, look, King and Queen of Wands came out just like the last time. Well, the Queen of Wands came out the last time. And now the, the King of Wands is here. This is This talks about balance. The masculine and the feminine energy within the self that is balanced. Wow. And that's the beauty. That's the beauty here. Okay, so let me just write all this down. Because um, fate, it's almost like playing with fate, writing with fate, being intertwined with fate, being one with fate, flowing with fate, co-creating with fate, co-creating your destiny. I don't know. I feel like... Oh my god. Because you have your acceptance. The acceptance card. It's all, I almost, okay, I almost feel like, because this is, this is just my process, okay? Um, it's almost like, do you accept fate or do you accept The co-creation of destiny, like what you co-created. Because please tell me why I feel like destiny and fate are two different things here. Like I feel like this destiny. Is something that you have created. Or that you have co-created with spirit. And then the fates, fate, 
is something like out of your hands. Like I feel like destiny here has free will involved and I feel like that fate's energy ne doesn't necessarily have free will involved. So with this group, it's really in interesting. It's almost like, do you accept fate or do you accept destiny? Oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> um, I feel like this group, crow number three, it's going to be broken down into two. And this is something I never even thought of doing. So with this group, if you choose crow number three, you're going to have to choose A. Co-creation. Accept. Acceptance. So accept co-creation destiny. Accept a co-created destiny or B, accept fate. Wow. And that's like why like balance came out twice because I'm seeing justice. I'm seeing like the two scales. Like one is destiny, the other one is fate. And both have beautiful opportunities. Both have their own choices and consequences. Yeah, see, oh my God, you have to make a choice. Oh my God, look at this choices and their consequences. I didn't even like pick that up until now. Yeah, so this crow, damn, this crow is serious. Um, So this crow is all about making a choice between a co-created destiny, so accepting a co-created destiny, something that you have created with the confidence in your magic, or accepting fate. Oh, oh my God, okay. Ooh, all right, let me write some of this down. Um, so I wrote that, mm -hmm. twice. So I guess like the layout of this would be Crow number three A and then crow number three B. Okay. Wow, but it's absolutely creation here with the Empress and the Three of Wands. It's interesting because to me, like um the Three of Wands is destiny. Like that confidence in your magic, the things that you have taken action on, the things that you have prophesied, the things that you have foreseen as opportunities for yourself and what you wanted, what you have intended on, um, your intentions, your spiritual energies, the things that you are focused on. Um, and that's what's being manifested and coming to you. Those are the opportunities coming to you. Do you see that? That's what you're looking at. That's what you're focused on. That's what you're seeing for yourself, for your life. And fate is this empress energy with this like divine. Remember how I even was saying at the beginning, I felt like this cosmic womb energy because um, it came out in the, in the card shuffling. Um, it didn't physically come out, but it was in the split. And this is the energy of that cosmic womb energy. That's that mother, all mother energy. That's that. This is fate. So do you accept what fate is bringing you? <gasps> Ooh. Oh, Lordy Lord. Um, wow. Yeah, look. Like, do you accept? What do you accept? Oh my goodness. Okay, so it's going to be 3A, 3B. So choice. So um, so in the destiny, you have three of wands. And then the fate is the empress. That is fascinating. All right, so you have acceptance. We wrote choices. So this is definitely experiencing something new. Experiencing new opportunities of fate or of co-created destiny. Okay, then you have eternity. 
balance and transformation wow okay all right that was num that was uh really interesting okay i feel that i definitely feel that okay all right so that is crow number three thank you crow number three i knew this was gonna get crazy <laughs> All right, um, yeah, we got everything there. All right, my friends. Now, my crow friends. Now let's do crow number four. So this is crow number four. All right. All right, so crow number four. Um, so we did crow of creation. No, sorry, this, yeah. So, so crow number three is crow of creation. Crow 3A and crow 3B. Um, and then crow number two is crow of the Akashics, crow number one, crow of the beloved, and crow of communication. Okay, let's see who crow number four is. I don't know if this is going to be, like, around healing, crow of healing, um, let's see here. Let's see who the fourth crow of enchantment is. The fourth crow of enchantment. Who are you? Who are you? The fourth crow of enchantment and what messages? What energies do you bring forward? Crow number four. Crow number four. If you're the wall, obstacles at the bottom of the deck. I'm going to shuffle. I'm definitely feeling a healing energy. Um, oh, don't feel. I don't feel ready. Don't feel ready. Revelation, joyful. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me shuffle. Okay. There we go. Phone number four of enchantment. Who are you and what energies do you bring? What energies do you bring forward? What teachings, what wisdoms do you have? Crow number four. Crow number four. Oh, are you kidding? Okay, so you're the shadow. This is the crow of the shadow. Because you have your rising above the fray, will of the wish, treasures hidden in the shadows. So this crow helps. Okay, so this is the energy that we've been. This is about healing. This is about healing, but it's 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 an aspect of healing of um kind of like uncovering because i'm like i'm seeing this lay of the land ancestral wisdom it's almost like a, it, there's something within dna especially here with the cosmic womb um divine feminine energy and then initiation okay um initiation is not really standing out to me per se but like this portal is more than anything else also this like i'm seeing that sun as a portal as well and you have here like yourself moving into this portal about one right there okay i feel like because we've been seeing the shadow differently right um we've been talking about this for a really long time i channeled it in a few readings of treasures hidden in the shadows and these are like aspects of self in the shadows skills talents um things that you didn't think you may be good at and you're being good at, like you find out that you're really good at something that you didn't think you would be good at that you would be good at it's like hidden talent hidden skill sets um hidden magic um hidden aspects within your dna that haven't awakened yet um 
I also talked about this in that moon reading, didn't I? Where there are aspects of selves that are coming in because of all the healing and all the work that you have been doing. And when they get integrated into you, they're, they, are, they are reawakened. And as they reawakened, that's when you recognize that these energies rose above they rose from the shadows so you're notice so this is a good okay so this is the crow of the shadows but this crow is assisting you in identifying things that you have not known about yourself things that you are good at that you had no idea in a million years that you would be good at um talents magic things within your dna that are unlocking that are awakening that are being uncovered and discovered so discovered and uncovered and then being activated and awakened so this is the crow of the shadows um crow number four crow of the shadows Okay, um, okay, I feel like there's a lot more here that I may not be seeing just yet, so just give me a minute. Yeah, the unexpected. Okay, okay, okay. I see you. I see. I see him or her. I see you. Yeah, the unexpected. Okay. <laughs> Crow of the unexpected. Crow of the shadows. So yeah, these are things unexpected. Um, these are things unexpected. Okay. These are things that you do not expect yourself to have uh, within you um talent skills magic um or even like opportunities like unex like you are unexpectedly coming across these opportunities because of these um hidden talents and skill sets that have rose from this deep end they have come alive they have awakened and because so you are now aligning yourself to opportunities that are unexpected so this is what this okay i see this crow okay and it's interesting, I can't shuffle today. It's interesting because I feel like this crow has come out in some of the readings talking about the treasures in the shadows in so many sign readings where this message has been replaying over and over again. And then Rob at Rob's, um, Rob Odinson's channel, he came through and he um, sent me an article after I was channeling this treasures hidden in the shadows um about a golden shadow um so it's really interesting that this message keeps appearing in the collective so i'm really not surprised that this crow yeah self-reflection yep yep look where the self-reflection card is also it's underneath the treasures hidden in the shadows okay so these are things about yourself that you would have never seen before that it's like you don't recognize that these aspects are a part of you but they actually are it's so unexpected it's surprising but it's also exhilarating and really really exciting um because it's taking you to new heights and to new places that you never thought that you would be in or go to or be birthed um it's really fascinating really 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 beautiful like this crow really takes you into um a depth of yourself to uncover to uncover the these beautiful shadows um and aspects of yourself that, that you have disregarded thrown away or has just um um been under a lot of trauma or wounds here with ancestral uh wisdom so cleaning those ancestral wounds um unlocking that dna um and, and then crossing into into something new here um, and being rebirthed. So it's really interesting. Yeah, release. 
Okay, so release is under ancestral wisdom card. So I'm seeing like the release and you can see the beautiful butterflies here. So this definitely is transformation. Um, but this is also 27. You have your 62, which is also 9. Um, so nine, And you do have 18 here, which is 9. So you do have your 999. So um, that's a powerful number here. It's also talking to you about the ninth dimension, which I have I can't even comp like understand what that is. But um i'm seeing here like release of ancestral wounds okay release of ancestral traumas um i'm also seeing just release of your own wounds and your own traumas okay um but i feel like for this group so like whoever chooses you know crow number three um it's gonna be the group that has done a lot of work um, regarding ancestral wound cleanup um, in the astral, <laughs> in the astral, and astral cleanup, okay? Ancestral, astral cleanup, all right? Um, so this crow also assists in that, okay? Like that's the domain of this, of this crow is the shadows and, and also the shadows in the ancestral astral plane. There are shadows in the ancestral realms. And so this crow also assists in that release. Um, so this is the group that has cleaned up their astral and this is for the group that is cleaning up their astral, uh, their ancestral astral plane. So they, this crow also assists in that, um, that cleanup, okay? Um, yeah, so Crow of the Shadows is definitely a name for this one. Um, so this one I've gotten five. So I don't, so five. This one wants five cards. Okay. Oh. So Resilience came out, number 21. And the, the Creation card came out. This is really interesting because, oh, this is why this one wants five. Because this is change. So yeah, release, change. Okay, so it's interesting creation came out. So creation came out because of this divine uh, cosmic womb. So this creation card is actually talking to me. So this is like a, a cosmic all mother is something that I'm seeing here. This is about rebirth. Okay, this is about rebirth. Rebirthing from the shadows. Rebirthing aspects of self from the shadows. The aspects of self that we have disregarded, that we forgot about, that we have disowned, that are under so many wounds and traumas, okay? And when they come to pass, when they are rebirthed, well, first, when they're healed and released from these wounds and from these traumas, they will be rebirthed and, and so to speak, recreated and then reawakened in the self, reawakened in the self into something so beautifully unexpected, as they rise above the shadows or rise from the shadows into the light, into the light, into a new unexpected form, into a new form, okay? So this is where this group, oh my God, this crow is really assisting you in acknowledging the people that have been in this depth and in these shadows and doing the work and that are so resilient. And this is like for the group that are um, going and, and, and wanting this change, praying for these changes, um, praying for this rebirth. Like I can feel it in this, in the group that this crow is assisting. Um, really incredible. Um, really awesome. Okay. So let's see, um, some more energy from this crow. You have your journey. So I'm getting like unexpected journey. Okay, unexpected journey, unexpected turning points. Um, earth, physical, interesting. Very interesting. Um, interesting. Oh, happiness. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. So I'm definitely going to get... So there was the amethyst stone that came up in the third crow. This one had the citrine... Oh, look at Crow again. Destiny. 
Yeah, the, the crow just wants to keep coming out because we're talking about the crow and key opportunities here. Okay, so this key, these opportunities, these are opportunities that are coming from this depth. Okay, these are opportunities that are coming from yourself. These are treasures hidden in the shadows. Opportunities hidden in the shadows. Okay? Opportunities hidden in the shadows. That's what this group is. Okay? Um, crow, excuse me, that's what this crow is. I keep saying group, but I'm not doing the pick a card yet. <laughs> I'm just trying to get to know who the crows are. Um, okay. All right, so let's get some tarot. Let's get five tarot cards out. There's one, two, three. Oh, crow of the shadows. Crow of the shadows. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Talk about a resurrection. Talk about a resurrection from the shadows here with judgment. Oh my goodness gracious. There's the hermit, the cave, the caveman. <laughs> There's that hermit energy. Um, being in that self-reflection, introspective mode. But also like getting the lay of the land of the shadows is the hermit energy. And then you have here with the two of coins. The tower, that's this unexpected energy. Look at look at the lightning. Look at the lightning around this card. Okay, so this unexpected energy, that's the tower. Okay, so this crow is just confirming that energy. And there's the three of wands. That's the opportunities that are coming in for you. These opportunities are coming in from the shadows. Wow, these are treasures from the shadows that are so unexpected. I love it. Okay, so let me... Oh my god, look at also the lightning here in the change card. I know it's getting dark here. Hope you guys can see it. There's the lightning there and the lightning there. Love that. Okay. Wow, this is a powerful one too. Okay. Alright, alright. So I'm just going to write this down. Okay, so... So, Crow of the Shadows, Treasures, Hidden in the Shadows, um, this is Healing, okay, a Rebirth, Unexpected Opportunities, Unexpected Opportunities, uh, an Unexpected journey change happiness came out oh my goodness um ancestral astral cleanup this pro assists in those that are cleaning up the astral and also self wounds and traumas Things you didn't know about yourself come to light. Things you didn't know about yourself come to light. And we talked about rebirth. Oh, wow. This is so beautiful. Let me see if I'm missing anything else from here. Opportunity. Crow so this crow with the destiny, this is, um, I don't actually feel this energy here. I just, I feel like this crow is just delivering, um, delivering healing or resurrection. Okay, these are energies resurrected from the shadows. Okay, is what I see this crow helping and delivering in. So... Um, let me write resur oops. resurrection, resurrection from the shadows. So these are aspects resurrected. Okay. Um, two of coins is an interesting energy. Again, two of coins is an interesting one because I feel like this is the, this has the same energy to me as this release card. You see the butterflies being released from the self. 
and it also feels like this is a release like you're handing something you're giving something away as this energy see how this energy starts rising up from the shadows right and it also gives the same kind of illustration and depiction that the ancestral um ancestral wisdom see the see this person here with their arms up like that with this golden energy very similar right so that's fascinating as well to me um so this does talk about like a release it doesn't feel like a um uh what's the word like a, it doesn't feel like a sacrifice it feels like a letting go so release letting go is also what this crow assists in um um i'm getting this energy of like i'm getting this energy of like what you give to me or what you're holding on to whatever you give to me i will give you something better is something that i'm seeing here with the two of with the two of pentacles um and it's all it's like these shadow aspects these aspects of yourself are talking back to you like you're having this conversation with yourself and and it's like your shadow aspects are speaking to you and saying if you release if you let go of what you're holding on to i can give you something so much better wow <laughs> or maybe that's what the crow is saying i don't know <laughs> maybe the crow is literally talking to me right now and saying that um well saying that that's the message for this group uh, yeah okay no <laughs> um so release letting go Wow, okay, this is what I have. So these are the four crows, okay? So the four crows, again, are the crow of the beloved, crow of the communication. The second one is crow of the Akashics. The third one is crow three, crow of creation, which is broken down into two, acceptance of a co-created destiny, or B, accept fate. And then crow four is crow of the shadows. So again, this is just my process of getting to know these crows, channeling these energies, what these crow bring forward, how they help. Um, and then I'm going to do a pick a card. So you're going to pick a crow. So you're going to pick either crow of the beloved, crow of communication. You're going to pick either uh, crow of the Akashics, crow of the creation. Either you're accepting co-created destiny or accepting fate or choosing crow the shadows and then i'm going to walk you through a little bit about what the crows are before you pick um and then yeah we're going to pull a spread for each one um and we'll do a reading for each one so really interesting energies i hope you guys enjoyed my process um it's also for me too I'll probably go back to this video just in case that I don't miss anything in my notes. Um, I'll probably do a little bit of a meditation next to understand a little bit more of these crows. Um, yeah, so I love you guys. All right, bye.